All right, this is the Manfuse Podcast. I am Kay Lee, audio producer, voice artist, sitting here with the co-host yes, of sir. the Manfuse Podcast, Ben H. <laughs> Real estate mogul. That was the sound effect, by the way. So, Ben, you hit me up this morning and you were adamant that we get in front of a microphone today yeah. to talk about something that is going on and a national security threat. Potentially. What is it, Ben? What is it that we had to stop what we were doing to make another episode. Well, apparently there's some groundbreaking information being uh, discussed up at Capitol Hill about UFOs, unidentified flying objects, aliens, otherworldly life reports, and things that have happened as it pertains to that. So I thought... Unexplainable events. Unexplainable. UAPs also. What is a UAP? Unidentified aerial phenomenon or unexplainable aerial phenomenon, something like that. Oh, yes. Key lawmakers did warn at a House hearing that unidentified aerial phenomena, as UFOs, must be investigated and taken seriously. Absolutely. Because they don't know if this is a being from another planet that has invaded our atmosphere and flying around in a way that just doesn't make sense with the technology that we know anybody possesses, so it must be, or it could be the Russians. Well, one of the things in question is literally an upside-down pyramid that was videoed in the sky. There were a number of them. Upside-down pyramids, literally floating around. Big, huge. The photography was taken by a Navy ship in night vision and all different types. And they don't know what the hell it is. Are you sure it's not some dude on acid seeing things upside down? No, I mean, this is like, for real, these, these, uh, these, these pyramids are unexplainable. Yes, there is a gentleman, um, Scott Bray, Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence, be- appeared before the panel yeah. to answer some questions from lawmakers. Right. And during his testimony, Bray showed videos and images to demonstrate what observations of UAPs may look like. That's one, right. One video featured images of a flashing triangle shape as seen through night vision goggles. And then he went on to show an image of what appeared to be another triangular-shaped object that he said came several years later off of a different coast. Pretty fucking crazy. It's wild, dude. And there's a lot of things over the years, you know, a lot of different pilots have seen and reported things. But even more than that, pilots are saying that, hey, we, we've, we, we've been seeing stuff like this for a while, but every time we bring it up, we get laughed at, basically, so we don't even talk about it. Yeah, people think you went full tin foil. Yeah. If you really start, you yeah. know, um, talking about your belief in aliens and those people are on the outside. You could join a clique, a group of people that do believe in the same thing you do. Yeah. And there are a group of those people as well. Well, yeah. I mean, theoretically, it could be, you know, aircraft that were created to create a scent that there's aliens out there when there's really not. But a lot of these things move in a way that is unexplainable. unexplainable. We don't have anything. Countries don't have anything that moves like these things move. It's as fast as they do, how they change directions. If they did, they'd dominate the world militarily, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. There's nothing even close. You couldn't. Yeah, there's no, no arsenal in any military that could keep up with it. That could, no, nuclear power is still the thing. Right. These things make nuclear power look like a joke. The ability to maneuver yeah. sideways, forward, right. up, down. I mean, like, all over the place. Yeah, it defies what we know gravity. Yeah, I mean, it defies everything. The physics, like at this point, we have nothing that can move like that. No, absolutely not. They they would need you know gravitational. Um, they would need a gravitational field for their existing inside of or outside of gravity and a another, bubble. And another thing, when you hear or if you were one of those fortunate people to have seen Bigfoot or yeah. wherever, there's never any exhaust yeah. coming. Like, there's never any 
you know, when you have a plane, yeah. it leaves smoke right. trails. Right. It's like almost well, and like, unlike, vaporless. And unlike Bigfoot, there's literal, there's tons of video. There are tons of pictures of the, of this stuff happening. You've got Navy pilots that are legit Navy pilots coming and saying, "Look, I saw something out there, and there I'm flying the damn F twenty two Raptor." And how exclusive of a club is that for you to be a pilot of yeah. one of those? You're right. talking about one in. Yeah, millions. Oh, millions yeah. and millions would ever of be people trusted. people who want to. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, you have to get, you might want to, oh, but yeah. you have to prove to the government that you are a capable, reliable, Freyer. just like going to space. The guy's name's Commander Freyer. He was the commander of the entire squadron. He's probably in a um, straitjacket somewhere now. No, he's still talking <laughs> about it, man. I mean, they got him all over the place talking about this. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting, man. I mean, and now it's in front of the Pentagon. It's in, you know, it's really, it's really something that is that is uh, coming out. Yeah, I mean, everything that's ever reported is pretty much swept under the rug or filed away in some classified file to where if they do investigate it, whatever they find, you'll never know the answer to it. Well, um, and all these reports, are like, oh, the agencies are grappling with how much information to release. How about just release it all? Release it all. Like, but what are we going to do? If you know, then share. If you don't know, say you don't fucking know. There is nothing wrong with saying, I don't know. We don't have an answer. But the government doesn't like to do that. The government would rather bury it to where they don't look like they're incompetent. Yeah. Or maybe they have the information and they don't want you to know. And why would they not want us to know? It would disrupt the fabric of society. But why would it disrupt the fabric of society? <laughs> Whatever it was. I mean, because, okay, there's aliens. I mean, you look okay. around, there, there's little bugs flying around. They might as well be aliens. Because do you think the government or any government wants its people to think that there's anyone more powerful than them. No. I mean, other that, than God. In if, God we trust. Right. They'll use that as a crutch all day long. It's uh, a sales pitch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, exactly. And I'm not saying that I don't believe in some form of higher power, but, um, and I think everybody who says, oh, I don't believe in God. Well, when shit gets real, he'll be the first person you're talking to. <laughs> there's no atheists on the battlefield. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When shit gets real, and regardless, whether it be a diagnosis, whether yeah. it be a fight, yeah, a war, you'll be praying. You'll be going, oh my God. Or whether it be your, one of your kids gets sick, you will be talking to somebody. Yeah. Because it's out of your control. Yeah. But from a government standpoint, why would I want to let my people know that there is something out there that is invading our airspace, moving in a way that we can't explain with technology that we don't have. And that's what they're have. saying, though. But that is what they're saying. What? They're saying, we don't know what this is. I think somebody knows what it is. I think I might know what it is. Oh, everybody, let's take a moment of silence and let Ben educate not only me, yeah. but the world. Well, I, I just think it's it's interesting how we see pyramids throughout the world New pyramids are, are being discovered. We really don't know how old the pyramids are. We know about the inscriptions upon the pyramids and things of that nature. We know how old the tombs are within the pyramids, but we don't know how old the structures are. And, and we everyone, don't know how they were built. And uh, yeah, everyone knows that we don't know how they were built. We don't know how they did what they did. We don't even know if we could do it today. We couldn't. The, the the stone from the Great Pyramid was brought from hundreds of miles away, a rock quarry. And these are huge blocks, 70-ton blocks I mean, of stone. Some of our think, modern equipment no. couldn't even lift it or so, cut it. And you've also got pyramids, apparently, on Mars. Right, I've They've seen that. some pyramids. There's some imagery showing things that look a hell of a lot like pyramids. I've also heard that they have found pyramid structures on the moon. I've also heard they found pyramid structures on a moon that goes around Saturn called Titan. 
with the new telescope that they've just launched out, they found is, some crazy shit on is Titan. Is that the James Webb? Or is that what it is? Who's, James Webb Telescope. James Webb. No, it's a, this is a different one that they actually sent over to Mars. And oh, okay, the gotcha. imagery is just coming back. So anyways, there seems to be some sort of thing with pyramids and ancient civilization and ancient technology. And when you look deeper into that and you look deeper into the things that we were taught, at least in school, when, you know, you're talking about the Sumerians and the ancient civilizations of the earth. And then when we talk about God, for example, okay, God is always someone who comes from somewhere else, who created this place for human beings and created human beings as well. And then some think it's just dumb fuck luck. At the end of the day, you know, you've got um, the Anunnaki. People talk about the Anunnaki, who a lot of people say the Anunnaki created human beings. Right. To be their slaves and to mine gold on the earth. And then they left the earth after they mined the gold from the earth and left the human beings behind. And basically that was when, you know, a couple hundred thousand years ago, basically the beginning of our human civilization. Right. Right. When we took over, they left, and then we started forming our own deal. Well, and not only that, there are accounts of UFOs in art. Oh, my God. The, Hieroglyphics? You know, from the 19... You know, before the night, like, old Mary Magdalene, like, right. art. Well, I find it really fascinating that you can go into these caves in civilizations yeah. that were... Thousands of miles apart, uh -huh. didn't know each other, probably didn't know of each other, but yet they have theoretically pictures yeah. depicting the same things, the same yes. creatures, mm -hmm. the same astrology, yeah. the same. I mean, they've built their pyramids in similar right. ways. Like, Some of the same size pyramids, right? To the to the penny, like to the inch exact same size i mean and you think about it and i've watched a lot of ancient aliens love that show. i love that show yeah. too but when you think about it because they pose all these questions like not only how the ancient hell did they get alien theorists right believe the dude with the crazy hair yeah um but they also pose the questions not only how did they get the stone here but how did they cut it so precise yes that you couldn't put a hair right. in between them. Well, there's a lot we don't know. But one thing that we have record of is that people have been seeing these aircraft. Before we had aircraft, people were seeing these aircraft. There's just so many unexplainable things, but some things that we have attempted to explain with certain amounts of evidence that we have uncovered and cataloged and... What do you believe? Do you believe that there are extraterrestrial aliens flying around <clears throat> the past thousands of years? If we think we are the most technologically advanced society... On this earth? Certainly. Yeah. That we know of? <clears throat> right. We couldn't even reproduce some of the things that we have found from civilizations that were how many years ago? From what we know, they were still lighting their places with torches. Yeah. So how the fuck could they build that? So that's one thing. The next thing is you see evidence through drawings and writing and whatever scripts these different civilizations were using right. that are depicting the same things and they're thousands of miles apart or like thousands said, of years apart. Thousands of years apart, not knowing of those civilizations that we know of. Right. Having no connection to them, but they're all depicting the same shit. Yeah. So when I look at our galaxy, when I look at space in general, there's got to be something else. We can't be the only dumb fuck <laughs> luck. Right. So am I to believe that we are the only planet ever out of every solar system which we don't even know how many solar systems that we haven't even explored space how far right. it goes are we the only ones that accidentally grew 
due to the sun being where it is. And I just find that kind of hard to believe. Well, I, I do, too. And I also find it interesting. That there's so many accounts throughout history of the same things, these these uh, disc shaped flying objects and the tic tac shaped flying objects. And they're still around and people see them all over the place. And uh, so I just think it's really interesting, man. I, th I think that there's a lot more going on than, than, than we think or that we know. And I think that use your imagination. If you can imagine it, it might be true. And you look at Star Wars and, and different science Star fiction Trek. books and Star, Star Trek. Trek and all these kinds of things. And maybe it's like that. I mean, maybe I mean, it, it seems logical to think that there would be some sort of a federation or, or controlling body or governance to, you know, different areas of the universe and, and that we would fall within that. And, you know, if our civilization is, say, I don't know, 100,000 years old or 200,000 years old. I mean, really, we only have written history back 10 or 15,000 years. That's nothing. Right. Imagine a civilization that has millions of years of technological advancement. And if the universe is billions and billions and billions of years old, then it's certainly not infathomable to think that there would be some civilization that's been around for a couple million years that figured out how to time travel or bend time or jump through different dimensions or at least travel through the universe and visit other places and right. find other places that have life. Maybe even implanting life on different planets <clears throat> and coming back to check up on them. See how the experiment's going. And then I think to myself, well, if there are aliens and they are dropping down and they're flying around and we're catching them like we're seeing them, you know, and they're being spotted, why wouldn't they just land and walk around, show themselves? Yeah. I mean, ultimately, if you think about it, we are the literal definition of an alien. The only difference is that we are on our planet right if we went to another planet like mexico even venus or some shit or mars How about we would Uranus? literally be an alien species on that planet absolutely i mean we are intelligent life look at the cock on that bastard yeah. <laughs> <laughs> god he is an alien <laughs> sorry damien yeah oh god <laughs> That was, that was a uh, reference. He was number one. Yes, he was. No, he was not even number two. There yeah, was not, no, there's number, no two. number two. That is a you got to start at number five. Right. That is a reference to a listener who emailed us on the last podcast. Please check it out. Our advice to Damien was we weren't laughing at him. We were laughing at ourselves. Yes, absolutely. I agree. We would be an alien species anywhere we go to mars we go to the moon anywhere even if there's no life there that we can see we're still aliens to that planet well there's another idea as well which elon musk has talked about which is that there's a probability a high probability that we're actually living in a simulation mm -hmm. i've heard that too like the matrix of some sort that was created by some one else or something else it's like the matrix and the question becomes because now that we can create these simulations the metaverse we can create this stuff where you can exist and and these types of things so we're pretty close to creating life probably we already can clone and create life mm -hmm. either we are in a simulation that was created by someone else or we're creating simulations we're the jump off point Nobody has the definitive proof one way or the other, so you only have just enough information to help in your belief in one way or the other, whether it be the Big Bang Theory, because when you look at that, you can kind of see some potential truth Yeah. in all that instead of God's finger was on right. the, you know what I'm saying? So um, from a science standpoint, and it's just a theory... But you kind of like when it's explained to you and all the, you know, okay, well, this is why this planet's here and this is how, you know, these stars, whatever. You're like, oh, well, that's that could be one way too, you know? Well, the thing I don't understand, and I've asked a lot of people and they've all tried to explain it to me. I don't understand and I'm not, 
I, I'm not anything. I'm not a flat earther. I'm not none of that shit. You know what I mean? I just am seeking truth. Information. Information. I'm, I'm to open-minded ma- to any type of information. To make your own decision from informed data. Yeah, my basis of belief is the things I've been taught throughout my life and the things that all human beings regard as the way it is. I mean, that's what I think it is. And at the same time, I'm open to exploring different ideas. And here's an interesting thing. If said Big Bang, let's say, occurred, and everything is just flying apart still at this massive rate of speed, which apparently they've been able to prove that the universe and everything is just, you know, flying away from one another. Well, if that's the truth, how is it that the constellations have remained exactly the same for thousands and thousands and thousands of years that you look up at the night sky and you see the same Orion's belt that they saw 10,000 years ago, you know, the same Big Dipper that they wrote down on the cave wall. It's still the same. If we were flying apart at such a rapid speed, wouldn't that change? Wouldn't you see different constellations? Right. But what if our galaxy in itself as a whole is moving? So we see the same things, but the galaxy itself is moving through other portions of space. Yeah. But we, where we're located in that galaxy, we're only going to see the same thing. Yeah, and, and and apparently the planet is moving. Not only is it moving. Spinning fast as fuck. It's spinning. It's moving and it's spinning. And apparently the sun is moving. And we're spinning around it and it's spinning and everything else is spinning. In the meantime, you walk outside. Everything is still. And everything's still. And you look at the stars and they look the same way they did thousands and thousands of years ago. Like, right. what is this shit? We don't understand it. And the ultimate question, why is there something and not nothing? Hmm. And this lends itself to the idea that there is a creator. I agree. Why is there something and not nothing? Why are we it having was this conversation? <laughs> you know, for us to live, for grass to grow... I mean, you take one of the big elements out of the scientific equation, yeah. whether it be the water, the sun. It's over. It's over. Yes, Genesis, the, the first seven days. Right. That's where everything is. What did he do on the eighth? We don't know. We, it started back over again. He created, <laughs> separated the, the light from the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> he separated the light. We know he rested on the seventh day. The eighth day, we're not sure about. He threw his leg up on the table on the ninth day, and he had a way, his way with himself. Well, I had a thought, and here was my thought. What if, I mean, because you think about like days and months and weeks and years and, and all the ways in which we define time. Mm-hmm. What if every day was called something different? Okay. Well, I is. mean, the uh, truth is every day literally is different. There's no two days that are exactly alike. No. There's, you know. There's a, no Groundhog Day. No, there's no ground. Every single day is, 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 is a different day. So like, oh, it's Monday again. But it's not the same Monday. No. So I guess from the date perspective, it is a different date. Right, but we're it'll gonna, never be the same date again. I guess that's how we mark it. But the events that happen throughout one's day, yeah, is different. It's whether always even, different. Whether you take the same route to work, whether yeah. you go to the same job, whether you do the same things, there's still variables that make it unique and different. I wonder if we'll die without knowing. So many people have died, and they don't know, and just not knowing. Somebody knows. Somebody knows something, and we need to find them. Well, yeah, and, you know, I mean, you'd figure the guy that's sending rockets into space would know the most. Elon Musk says that he doesn't think there's aliens at all. He doesn't believe it. No. He said, yeah, I've never seen anything that would suggest. And I'm like, how is that the case? you never seen anything that would suggest. You're talking about a guy that thinks very outside the box. I mean, you look at ancient sites, man, like Puma Punku, for example. Dude, this site has a structure on it which was obliterated. This structure was obliterated. Dude, it looks like something off a freaking Star Trek. 
and it's beautiful. It's got these in solid stone. I mean, perfect laser cut angles of how these blocks fit together and just it's just perfect unbelievable like structure like star wars looking structure and it looks like it was just blown to shreds and it's it's so old dude they they think it's thirteen thousand years old it's so old that they don't even know how old it is just sitting out there in the middle of the desert just saying it's blown to shit and it's like wow like what is that um down in Peru, oh, the yeah. Nazca lines, mm-hmm. but even more crazy than the that Nazca lines. That you can't lines, see from the ground. You got to see from way from up. From space, which I, or from a, from the air. And I, and I get that. They're drawing stuff. Okay, cool. But dude, there's mountaintops that have been flattened. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. runways. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. they're like roads. It's like a road where a mountaintop used to be. Well, you know, what is that shit? Well, they do. I've heard it before. God doesn't make straight lines. No. Well, and that's the shit that they found on Titan. The the moon of Titan, dude, has got like a city on it. Right. They just zoomed in on that shit. They're like, yeah, this is a city. Yeah, humans. This is like a huge structure. Humans make straight lines or, or creatures make straight lines. Well, why wouldn't they be humans? We are here. Well, right, but they could be aliens. But what I'm saying is yeah. if it's completely natural, there'd be no reason for straight runway no. lines no no i that mean the mountaintop a... used to be there right it was obviously cut off right <laughs> the mountain goes up like a normal mountain does and then all of a sudden it's flat right i mean it yeah. didn't just happen no somebody no. chopped that shit off nice and clean and we have no history to indicate it or at least if we do we don't know about it another interesting find is are you aware that there are literally pyramids and ancient Egyptian tombs found in the Grand Canyon. I wasn't aware of that. The Grand Canyon has pyramids and there have been tombs and ancient Egyptian artifacts and mummies well, and all that same you've shit. You've helicoptered into the Grand Canyon? I have. So have you seen any? I didn't see any mummies. Mm-hmm. It's off limits now. But dude, think about that. How does it change history? And this is what I'm getting to. Here's my point. His point. My point is this. They know what the fuck. Somebody knows. And I believe the reason why they're not telling us, the reason why it's not being made known to us, is because it would change history as we know it. The history that we think is history is not actually the history. It's just what we've been told. And it's what we've been teaching. And it's what we've been teaching. And I think that it would change religion. It would change what we think about the nature of uh, of everything, it honestly. Would, it would disrupt society. Yeah, absolutely. Because it would show what it would show. Right. And like I said, the government, they don't want to take responsibility. Everything we taught you has been false and wrong. They don't want to admit that. Well, not only false and wrong but we intentionally misled you so that we could control you correct right yeah so you could look to us for all the answers right as we're doing now oh the pentagon is going to release something right 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 Ooh, please give us some please tell us it's like another carrot they're dangling right and that's really what the government does it's they just you know want to control and they want to dangle little carrots Little carrots, so you keep following and obeying, completing their narrative Yes, that they keep spinning. Ultimate control. Ultimate control. I mean, yeah, man, there's so many pieces of evidence and so many things that you go, well, how the fuck did they do that? Yeah. And, like, we couldn't do it today with all of our technology and all of our big machinery. Right. Don't tell me a hundred slaves drug those blocks. Or even a million slaves. Right. And hoisted, drug it thousands of miles and then hoisted it up to the top of that fucking thing. There ain't no way. You'd have to have. And it's perfect. Perfect. It's perfect. Cut perfect. Nothing's perfect. Set perfect. This thing's perfect. And dead on like it was built like a fucking, like a Lego. And it's still. By a giant. And it still remains. Well, speaking of giants. Dude, they, you know, they're digging up giant bones all over the place, too. Oh, yeah, like some Human fucking... beings, 25-foot-tall human beings. Also, have you seen the, uh, the the mountains that look like tree stumps out in Montana? 
dude, there's massive mountains, which you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, it's a flat top mountain. When you really look at it, it looks like a tree stump that was From cut like, off, like, dude. Like fucking like Jack and the Beanstalk, like yeah, type fucking dude. trees. Yes. Well, and and they 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 take a petrified tree, and the petrification process it creates like a hexagon effect where the tree, um, where the wood grain went. I mean, and these mountains have that. Well, you know, going back to prehistoric, just in prehistoric times, you had creatures that were. Huge. Huge. So the trees then had yeah. to be bigger. Right. I'm sure. You would think. Yeah. I don't know. We don't know anything since the flood, which apparently happened 10,000 years ago. Was that when Noah was here? Yeah, the whole the whole flood, dude. The flood wiped out everything that was on this earth prior to the flood. The flood completely wiped the slate clean. So there's a whole aspect of like the history of this planet that we have no idea about because, dude, we don't have any knowledge of anything since the Great Flood. Right. And I mean, and other than that, there was a Great Flood. And what evidence we do find. And there is evidence of a Great Flood, whether you believe in the Bible or not. They find evidence of the Great Flood everywhere. Huge. Right. Well, the day, the more earth that you dig into, the more things you're going to find and the areas that we can't dig into very easily, which would be the ocean, which covers almost all of our planet. Yeah. Um, you know, how many secrets are buried there? Oh, it's unbelievable. How many cities, how many, right. How many ancient, how many pyramids, how many ancient artifacts and so forth? Oh yeah. Uh, it's unbelievable, man. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So do I believe in UFOs? Do I believe in life? off of this planet i'd have to say yes i do for yeah, sure yeah absolutely i mean and they could be walking among us I, I hope they are it'd be like mib like you know uh men in black that's right yeah and maybe there's some truth to men in black right maybe, maybe that's what's actually going on right exactly maybe you go into the back room of the pentagon and it's like an airport <laughs> yeah for aliens that That'd are flying crazy. in like you got five-headed <laughs> fuckers like a bar. <laughs> hey that guy's all cock yeah <laughs> look at that thing <laughs> it's just a giant penis walking around <laughs> and there's his girlfriend the giant <laughs> vagina <laughs> it looks like it's hungry <laughs> Man, that, it's I got mean, an itch that needs to be scratched. I'm very curious to see, you know, aren't they still supposed to be releasing other documents from when Trump was in uh, that they were trying to get the, you know, Area 51 shit yeah. released? But it's been blocked. It's been cock blocked. Big time. Because why would the government want to release information to prove some others that some of these theories? Yeah are actually valid. Well, have you heard of that guy, uh, Bob Lazar? Sounds familiar. Dude, this guy, Bob Lazar, back in the 70s, super smart guy, like a nerd, like a physics nerd, right? Mm -hmm. Literally put a rocket, a rocket engine in the back of his, like, Honda Accord or some crazy shit, and, like, drove it around town somewhere in New Mexico, wherever he lived. He drove a rocket-propelled car. Anyways, he was hired by the government because he's such a smart guy. And literally, he was working on UFOs. He reports these craft. He reports the technology that they were using. He reports about all these things. Dude, all of his shit has been cross-examined. And everything he says lines up. Bob Lazar is saying that it's an anti-gravity technology that they use, which basically, it, 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 it eliminates the gravity field. And that's how they move like they move. And so, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, and there's a lot of information out there. I just think it's interesting how it's just now hitting and it's just coming. And now it's, it's you know, the Pentagon and, and, and the U.S. government and, and all these different factions are involved as like the authority on it. Well, they're the ones taking all the giant bones. They're the ones taking and hiding all of the stuff that is found. Right. Ultimately, if you look at if you look up these stories of these people, they say, "Yeah, we found this thing. <clears throat> and the government come took it over, kicked us out, and that was it. Yeah. We were to never talk about it again." Fenced it off. Say, "Hey, you talk about this, we'll make you disappear." You got a lot of deathbed type things where people that had highly classified clearances and 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 all these types of things are coming out and you know going on record right before they die about things that have been 
kept secret and, and right. things of and this then, nature. And then it's so, it gets so little press, if any. And None. Then, and then- All you, anybody cares about is Amber Heard right now. Yeah, and her shitting in a bed. <laughs> Man, it's crazy stuff. It's well, distractions. You know, if you have any thoughts or comments, uh, anything we missed, educate us. Hit us up at the Man Fuse podcast. Just email us. Your stories, your thoughts, your concerns, and pictures. We, pictures. Any if you pictures have pictures, pictures of UFOs. Bigfoot, a Bigfoot, um, Yetis are very welcome here. We love the Yeti. Actually, did you know, Ben, there is a uh, 20 miles, 30 miles from here, there is a Yeti museum. Really? I didn't know that. You can see all the Bigfoots, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, please let us know what you think. We don't judge. We're open-minded individuals that seek the truth, that love information and love a different perspective. Absolutely. And I would love to have a scientist on here. Uh, I would love to interview somebody that- That'd be cool. Is way smarter on these topics than ourselves. A hundred percent. But I'll bet they can't play a vicious game of backgammon. You never know. Fuck them. I challenge them right now. <laughs> Come tell us about UB UFOs and let's play some bad gammon. Bad gammon. Yes, sir. Man Fuse Podcast. Peace.